that's what I was going to do. Awesome. Because I just got an Eevee. You know how rare Eevees are? The castle was not begun until 1435, almost 200 years after the mighty fortresses of the north. Its establisher, Sir William A.P. Thomas, was able to express his desire for status and domestic comfort in the castle's most famous feature, its, great, its stately great tower. An apt Thomas's death, his son William Herbert continued the grand work in the same lavish vein, creating a sumptuous palace with formal state apartments and a great gatehouse. Further changes took place in the mid-16th century after which the castle, in all its finery, was forced into active service. It endured in 1646 with one of the longest sieges in the Civil War before falling to Cromwell's forces and suffering at the hands of his demolition team. Even in ruin, the noble Raglan remains the finest late medieval fortress palace in the British Isles, preserving a wealth of decorated detail in its beautiful dressed sandstone walls. It signals the end of an era that began, strangely enough, less than 15 miles away at Chepstow. Okay. Very disrespectful. 
Y'all see that face up there? head up there, Austin. So where are we at, Austin? Look at the detail in this little fireplace up there. Well, those might have been for statues, but I bet you they're fireplaces. Yeah, they're fireplaces. There must be a bit of floor above there and then another floor. A lot of fireplaces. One, two, two three, four. Oh, look at this arch. Stone court. So that's the courtyard. I was um, Four horses to ride in, don't you think? Hey, Dad. Where you at, Austin? Uh, well, I'm at this awesome window, and you can see everything. You need to come see it, except it's a little windy. You're at Raglan Castle, right? Yeah, and it's it's incredible. Some of it was some of it was built in the in the 12th century. Cool, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's older than my Norton's, isn't it? By about 700-something years, yeah. <laughs> so well, where are we at right now? What part of the castle is this? We're in the wine cellar. The vino cellar. Vino. vino. Wino, Pinto. And here's how we got there through this little door. Dad can almost hit his head on. It's sunny, it's usually hot. And now the servants would have to carry the wine up these steps. I don't think that'd be very pleasant. You? I don't think I'm going to like being a servant. Do they get paid anything? Well, I get to live here and eat. Well, that's not much. It's better than dying out and living out there in the cold. That's all right. These are the apartments, and they all had their own fireplaces. This is above the buttery, the pantry. Buttery. The buttery. The buttery. The blooming buttery. <laughs> that blooming buttery. This is the hall. It, this is the finest of the surviving rooms in the castle. It was reconstructed by the third Earl of Worcester, or Worcester, in the later 1500s. And the weather plaque on the end wall above the dais bears his arms. The Earl and important visitors would have sat at a high table on raised dives overlooking the household lower down the hall. Where you are standing was a wooden screen closing off the service end of the hall. A minstrel's gallery above 
it was reached through the upper doorway. And the minstrels were the uh, musicians and the actors and actresses that would entertain the kings and queens and the knights. A crest. A crest. That's the crest. See that crest up there? So the newest building here was built 532 years ago. That's pretty old, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Go read with that, sir. Look at the fountain. See, here's the hole where the water used to spout down. You know? But this is only the fountain base. Hey, it's kind of a half pipe. Oh, that's a good one. How'd you like my 540? Let's see that again. <laughs> 